Hello, and welcome to the beautiful Elmhurst Christian Reformed Church, where the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra will perform as part of its next season. In a moment, we'll meet Marie Price, board member of the Elmhurst Symphony Association, and Stephen Altop, music director and conductor of the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra, to talk about next season's concert lineup. But first, I would like to share with you some of the history of the orchestra dating back to the 1940s, right here in Elmhurst, Illinois. In 1940, a group of musicians began to meet and play together on Sundays, and they formed a small orchestra, which then played between acts of the Elmhurst Community Theater plays. The group became the Elmhurst Community Theater Orchestra. In 1955, the theater orchestra officially became the Elmhurst Community Orchestra. They were now associated with the Elmhurst Park Board, which gave it year-round rehearsal facilities, and they were directed by Robert Houston. They had grown to 45 members and were made entirely up of volunteers from Elmhurst and the surrounding suburbs. From grandparents to parents to high school members to grade school children, whole families performed together in the orchestra. And with music from classical to swing, they played for school and community organizations, PTAs, civic events, and were also featured in Elmhurst College productions as well as children's pops concerts. The orchestra was associated with the Adult Education Evening School of Community District 88. District 205 didn't exist until 1974. Concerts were given as part of the Adult Education Lecture Series. In 1961, the Elmhurst Community Theater Orchestra officially became the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra under music conductor John Lazich, an Elmhurst resident. The first concerts were held in Willowbrook High School and later in the York High School Auditorium. By this time, the orchestra had enlarged its size and technical abilities. Now, 70 amateur, semi-professional, and professional musicians representing most of the West Suburban communities performed in regularly scheduled concerts. Later in the 1960s, the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra began performing its three concert series in the Hammerschmidt Chapel at Elmhurst College, where it performed for the next 40 plus years. And in 1979, the Elmer Symphony Orchestra performed its first outdoor concert as part of the Music Under the Stars series sponsored by the Elmhurst Park District in Wilder Park. Free family outdoor concerts have been performed annually on the campus of Elmhurst College for a number of years as part of the close of Elmfest in June. In 1986, the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra celebrated its 25th anniversary in Hammerschmidt Chapel under the direction of Dale Clevenger, principal French horn in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, who retired in 1995 and was then succeeded by Dr. Stephen Altop, professor at Northwestern University and sixth music director of the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra, who was about to celebrate his 14th year. Now, let's talk with our friend Stephen Altop and Marie Price about our upcoming 2009-2010 concert season. Good afternoon. I'm Marie Price, board member of the Elmhurst Symphony Association, and I am sitting with Dr. Stephen Altop, music director and conductor of the Elmhurst Symphony Orchestra. And he's been with us for 14 years, and we, we love him a great deal. So, Dr. Stephen Altop, if you could give us a little idea of what we can expect for this next season. Sure. Well... Um, the most exciting part of next year is that the Elmhurst Symphony will be performing in this beautiful uh, new venue at the Elmhurst Christian Reformed Church. And it is such a lovely space and we've already had the privilege of coming here to rehearse and just being bowled over by the warmth and the clarity of the sound of the orchestra here. So the prospect of doing all of our performances here in Elmhurst in this beautiful venue is very exciting and our gala opening will be on October 17th and we have a program called Rhapsodies in Blue and we'll start with one of the most beloved pieces of classical music the On the Blue Danube of Johann Strauss Jr. and that will be followed by one of two Rhapsodies our Stanger Young Artist winner Sophie Liu will play the Liszt Hungarian Rhapsody number no. one that will be followed by George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue so we have this Rhapsodies in Blue theme going. It's actually sort of like a trip down the Danube. And our pianist for the Gershwin is uh, George Lepo. 
And George was recently in the news a great deal because his trio gave some actual American premieres of music by Beethoven uh, in Chicago uh, in March. And then the program ends with Beethoven Symphony No. 7. So we sort of trace our way from Austria through Hungary um, and with a little side trip to America and then to Germany like the Danube goes. And Beethoven's Symph Seventh Symphony is uh, remarkable in its energy. And it'll be a great way to finish the concert. It sounds like a wonderful gala evening. It's going to be a very exciting way to introduce the Elmhurst Symphony to this beautiful new space mm -hmm. in the community. Sure will. And then our November concert is called A Celebration of Youth. It actually starts with a piece called Celebration, Symphonic Dance for Orchestra, by an American composer named Paul Bassler, a very exciting five-minute concert overture. And then we will do one of the most famous pieces of classical music, and that's Schubert's Unfinished Symphony, his Symphony No. 8 in B minor. And the themes of this, this symphony, including everybody knows them, and they're so singable. And yet, when's the last time you actually heard a live performance of this piece? Um, we'll do this Schubert uh, Unfinished Symphony. And then the major work or most major work on this concert is the work that we close with on the second half, and that is basically a symphony for the cello. It's Dvorak's Cello Concerto, and it's one of the most significant works for the cello. And it will be performed by a soloist who is barely 14 years old. His name is Johannes Gray. He's already won several competitions playing this work. And he should be a very exciting young artist to hear. I love the idea of the familiar music in the first half. Everybody likes to sort of swing to, 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 to familiar beat. Yeah, right. absolutely. And then uh, we're going to bring back a program idea that we had a lot of success with two years ago, and that's a celebration of Baroque masterpieces. And this concert in the second weekend in January will include some of the best known and best loved uh, Baroque pieces. We have Bach's Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 3. Uh, we have Pachelbel's Canon and the jig that follows it. You often hear the canon, but not the accompanying work that follows it. Um, I'll be playing an organ concerto by Handel. We will feature both this large organ and small organ in a concerto for two organs by Antonio Soler. Our concertmaster, Rika Seco, will play Bach's concerto in E major. And we have a Concerto Grosso by Handel. Just all of these wonderful pieces. And, of course, to top it all off, the beloved Adagio by Albinoni, which you've probably heard many times uh, because it's frequently used in all sorts of contexts from movies to background music. But to actually hear a live performance will be a lovely thing, especially in this space. And more familiar music. And would you say something about a canon? I mean, will, will we have something that will... Pachelbel's canon, actually... of course, is one of the most beloved pieces of classical music. Okay. And, and perhaps you hear it by string quartet now and then, but to hear it with the real string orchestra will be a wonderful thing oh, in continuo. And then um, in February, we're going to have another exciting program that will take place in Lombard. And uh, that concert will be a tribute to the Beatles, February 20th at Bistro Auditorium in Lombard. And uh, we have a group coming from Toronto called Jeans and Classics. And these folks are just fantastic at paying tribute to the music of great popular groups. I've worked with them before in a concert of music by the Eagles. And the Beatles concert will have all of these wonderful hits. Yesterday, Somewhere, Eleanor Rigby, um, your favorite Beatles tunes will all be on this concert. And Let's talk about familiar music. Uh, oh, yes. That certainly It'll be it. so yeah. much fun. All and ages will love that. That's right, because especially uh, in the last uh, three years, the music of the Beatles has become very um, popular amongst teenagers. Yeah, across the universe. Because of the movie Across the course, Universe. Yeah. And uh, these folks that will work with Jeans and Classics come with beautiful arrangements for the orchestra. So it's not just the Beatles music. It's the Beatles music with symphonic backing. And that's really special. Many classical musicians I know have great respect for the music of the Beatles because there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Beatles inspire this. I know at Northwestern, uh, for a while, we had a class on the music of the I, Beatles. I was just going to ask about That's that. That's exactly I remember right. That. And I think you have some memorabilia uh, of the Beatles' music at Northwestern. I think they did last year. I thought they had it displayed. That's very possible. Yeah. We have a number of those types of artifacts at Northwestern. Ah. And then, just 